The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. Hey, Ben. Yeah, Jones, what's up? You need to get a PlayStation 4. It's the greatest console ever. PlayStation 4. I think I saw a painting of that once at the local art museum. That's for the video games, right? Yes. Well, if I get one, I'm going to have to take it apart on camera for the Ben Heck Show. So I think I will do that, but then I'll put it back together and then I'll be online. Nice. Do what must be done. Amazing builds, exclusive mods, cutting edge ideas, electronics, engineering, and more. Every week on Element 14's The Ben Heck Show. Let's take apart the PlayStation 4 and see what's inside of it. Okay, we don't have the standard Sony square rubber feet that usually reveal the screws. I don't think there's any screws into the sticker. Aha! Here is a clue. These two stickers say, warranty void if removed. So, that is going to be where the, where the money is. Goodbye, stickers. Oh, look, I can't believe it. There was a screw under that. Will wonders never cease? There's a few more of these. They're not labeled, but they could also, yep, there's another screw. So instead of its past consoles where Sony hid the screws under black rubber feet, it now hides it under stickers on the back. Whatever. Oh, this is the iFixit bit set. Got it at Maker Faire a couple years ago. Pretty nice. All right. So generally speaking, anytime you see a warranty void if removed sticker, that's where you start cutting. Okay, I removed the rear screws. Uh, disclaimer, I haven't watched a single PlayStation 4 teardown video, so I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just doing this on the fly. Your favorite movie, which came out in 1987. Feels like there's something loose here. These pieces have some bend to it, so I'm kind of thinking that this frame pops off the bottom. I'm sure there's a big RF shield inside of this thing. Oh, there we go. Oh, Sony. Hmm. That was easy. Okay, here is obviously the main blower. Looks like their idea here is that it sucks air in through the side and spits it out the back. This is very much like the PlayStation 3 Slim. You've got a cool fan here, and this is probably going to be your uh, AC to DC power conversion back here. And it even says Sony Computer Entertainment, like they expected you to open it up. Doesn't look quite as sexy as the PlayStation 3 did inside, but whatever. It's actually smaller. I mean, this is smaller than the PlayStation 3 Slim. Hmm. I mean, just like the Xbox One, these first generation new consoles look like third generation. They're very, uh, very much optimized already. Okay, so I guess this thing is meant to be taken apart upside down. A fan facing down, that's, that's new. Uh, what's this guy here? It's probably your Blu-ray drive. All right. Well, let's, I'm going to actually, I'm going to assume, oh, and of course that's a different size, for no reason, just to make me mad. And for the record, I'm fairly console agnostic. Uh, I'm really not a huge fanboy of any console or company in particular, although last generation I certainly played Xbox 360 the most. But PlayStation 3 had some great um, first party, well, not first party, but uh, they had some really good exclusives like uh, Uncharted. Uncharted was great. They can make an Uncharted movie. All they have to do is make a modern day Indiana Jones. But you know, that's a lot to ask of Hollywood. I mean, all they had to do with Tomb Raider was make Indiana Jones with a chick and they couldn't manage that. Yeah, see this is gonna be your internal power supply. Here's your AC in. See how it's tilting up this way? 
And what they're probably is what we're probably going to find is a large thick connector which is probably going to be 12 volts into the main motherboard. And let's just give this a little love. It's probably press fit, hopefully. Otherwise, I'm going to be breaking things by doing this. Nope, it was press fit. Yeah, there we go. So this controls your power supply and this is probably 12 volts and ground DC. I love how Sony does this. It's like it comes out, it's like a toner cartridge in a printer. So this is your power supply. This is, this is the same thing that the Xbox 360 brick does. Next, I'm gonna to wanna to remove the Blu-ray drive. It looks like it's in its own plastic chassis here. Also, I've got a, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna, power supplies over here and there are the screws for it. These black screws were for the case. So I'm gonna put them in the case. Uh, this screw I just pulled out of the Blu-ray. Looks like they've got the Wi-Fi antenna going over the Blu-ray right here as well. This guy should pop out. Bring him back over. He'll be with the motherboard. That is so weird. There's a Phillips screw. They randomly put Phillips screws in here just to mess with you. I'm gonna take my silver marker and make a P there for Phillips, just so I know it's different from the rest. Uh, looks like the shielding isn't actually part of the... No, wait, it's clipped on there. That is weird. Oh, okay, that should come off with the Blu-ray. So I should probably get this ribbon cable removed. Okay, so this cable right here is probably gonna be your Blu-ray power. And the ribbon cable will be your Blu-ray data. Power data. I have not come across this type of flat flex connector before. I don't want to break it. There's some nice convenient pull tabs here on the connector. But it's resisting me. Can I pull it up? That metal moves when I move this, so it's definitely connected. I'm gonna push it down. Oh, okay, that's it. Oh, I bet that has some sort of latch. Let's see what happens when we push it back in. Yep, it pops up. I'll remove it from the console as well. Oh, that's very easy to do. Nice, good one, Sony. All right. Yeah, that's what it all, that's what it takes to make a slot loading disk drive. It's pretty cool, huh? And the Wii actually had an even more complicated mechanism than this because it could take the three inch GameCube discs. Yeah, it's very elegant. Guillermo del Toro's alarm clock. Accessing files on your ancient floppies? Less than easy. Getting exclusive access to content, contests, and myself on the Ben Heck Show page found in the Element 14 community? So much easier. Discover all of the ways we're building an easier experience at element14.com forward slash evolution. Yeah, there's supposed, there supposed to be a hard drive in here someplace? How do you get at it, I wonder? Maybe these come off sideways? Oh, oh, I get it. That's how you change your hard drive without removing the warranty voiding screws. And there's the hard drive. Samsung, just like what's in the uh, Xbox One. They are the same hard drive. <laughs> wow, exactly the same hard drive in both of the consoles. Huh, what do you know? Uh, looks like these screws will release this part of it. Uh, it doesn't seem like this should be coming out so rough. The rest of it came apart elegantly, so... If it feels like something's coming apart rough, it means you're probably doing it wrong. Ugh. Well, this piece was far too difficult to remove. It's got a giant light pipe in it, which illuminates the strip at the top. See that? 
All right, I think we're getting close. Okay, so it's the base of the unit. So we'll remove the rest of these. The deeper you get into PlayStation 4, the harder it is to take apart. I'm wondering if I have to remove this uh, pressure plate from the CPU in order to get the fan off. It's possible. Or not. PlayStation 4 held together with magic. Are there screws I'm missing? Oh, I bet I know what to do. This comes off. And it might reveal some more screws. Unless it doesn't. Oh, what the heck? Oh, boy. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Ah. Finally, the RAM chips on the PlayStation 4 have these thermal pads to sink their heat into the case. Uh, they didn't have this on the Xbox 360. Probably because this is actually DDR5 RAM on the PlayStation 4 versus DDR3 on the Xbox, so they'll run hotter and therefore need more cooling. All right, so this basically doesn't come apart. The fan assembly is built into the middle part of the case and half of the RF shielding is also attached to it. I'm sure this would peel off, but don't really need to do that just yet. So let's put this over here and take a look at the main motherboard. This is obviously the main APU, accelerated processing unit. This has the eight core CPU and the graphic core, you know, in one die. And in the older consoles, such as PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360, they would have two different dies, a GPU and a CPU, but they've combined them right off the bat for this. And just like the one in the Xbox uh, One, this is made by AMD. The difference is Sony's has uh, more GPU cores, but less built-in RAM, whereas the Xbox One has more RAM built into the die and fewer GPU cores. As far as the CPUs, they're very, very similar. Of course, this is surrounded by the um, high-speed DDR5 RAM. There's eight of these on each side, eight gigs total. That means these are each 512 megabyte RAM chips. One thing that's a little unusual is all the power regulation circuitry is down here toward the front of the board. Uh, you would think this would be closer to the 12 volt power input, which is back here, but uh, maybe the, they needed the Northbridge stuff here and that's why they had to put this all over here. I mean, they have some sort of regulation IC, some capacitors, some chokes. This is basically your power filtering for the main APU. And there's a battery, of course. Uh, over here, this is obviously where the hard drive hooks up. A little chip here, which goes right into the SATA ports. This is some sort of hard drive controller. There's two chips here that are labeled SCEI, which is Sony Computer Entertainment Incorporated. Um, I'm going to assume this is probably the Northbridge chip, which connects all of the I.O. together. You see this pretty much in any computer, including the Xbox One. And this one, uh, unless I've got it backwards, I know this system is supposed to have a special encoder chip, which helps the PlayStation 4 uh, encode video on the fly for streaming. So if one of these chips is that custom chip, it probably is this one, if I had to guess. See how this one appears like it's connected to everything? That gives it, that probably means it's a Northbridge. This little guy right here is probably an EEPROM of some kind. It stores your basic uh, configuration information. You know, if you pull out your hard drive on this, you can stick in a new one and reformat it to work as a larger hard drive. So the fact that there's some built-in basic operating system stuff, that's probably what that chip right there does. This is probably gonna be your Wi-Fi. Actually, I believe it is the Wi-Fi because it's got the little antenna connector there that we removed earlier. And this is gonna be for your ethernet. See how it goes right into the ethernet port. There's, look, there's only four ports on this. There's a USB, ethernet, HDMI, and optical audio out, along with the front USB ports. And of course, there's a speaker, which appears to be the new cool thing to put in next-gen consoles. So just like the Xbox One, this is a very efficient design right off the bat for a first-gen 
next-gen console, so uh, very nice work. That's all the time we have for today. In our next episode, we're going to be doing a surface mount soldering tutorial using soldering paste and a reflow oven. We'll see you then.